Hey guys, Ruffers for Knife Sharpening again. Um, got a video for you tonight. As a friend of mine has requested it for quite some time now, and I decided I would uh, go ahead and do it. Um, he had requested that I go through my Victorinox Champ and tell what all the tools for and their uses, because there, there's a lot of there's a lot of little tools on these things and some people don't know what they all are which is okay so we're going to go through some of them here and uh see if we can show you something new that you don't already know um first of all um this is the victorian Vic Vic champ so it's a it's a pretty big dude um sometimes i do drop it in my pocket but it ends up it ends up being a pocket brick so, I got this neat little nylon sheath from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Um, very well constructed. Uh, it's got a little belt loop here. And on the inside, it's got this little pocket. And they had this little, this little truing steel, or sharpening steel as they're called, with it. Well, it wasn't with the uh, sheath. I bought it separate. This was like $2 and some change. And this sheath was like $13. So I went ahead and bought that. That's really, really cool, really handy. And I put a ferrosium rod in here. So without further ado, I attached a, a long lanyard to this. I really don't like long lanyards, but uh, I figured it'd fit good on that. That's a button knot, I believe. Anyway, let's get to the knife. Okay, this is a Victorinox Champ. Um, and guys, those of you that own these things know, not just the Champ, but a Victorinox. If you're going to cut yourself, it's probably going to be with a Victorinox knife. Um, everybody I've known has cut themselves at least one time with them. Um, first of all, let's go to the back here. You got your, your standard corkscrew, obviously. Um, I've been told the Swiss drink a lot of bottled drinks or uh, wine, things of that nature, keep medicine, things like that in them. So that's the reason for the corkscrew. This is a little bitty flathead screwdriver. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Little bitty flathead screwdriver for your eyeglasses or anything of that nature that's that small. I've only used this once and that was on my son's glasses. But that is very cool how they put that in the uh, corkscrew here. And sometimes these things loosen up a little bit. You can kind of hear it kind of rattles. Um, what I do, I just get a pair of pliers and I kind of squeeze it together just a little bit. Make sure you wrap something around it before you do it. Or just screw it down in there a little farther. Um, this is a stick pin for removing splinters and things like that. And um, if you had to, I, I tried it once with some uh, braid. You could wrap some thread around the end of this and uh, use it to sew with. But you've got to, when you do that, you've got to kind of wiggle it through the hole, but you got to make sure you tie a good knot on the end of it for that. A lot of people don't, don't know that that's there. Um, that always blows people's mind when I show them that. And that fits right there in the handle. Like so. Okay, next we have this little chisel. Um, I have used this thing, believe it or not, on multiple occasions. Um, the main thing that I've used it for is... Uh, when you change out dead bolts and door or uh, doorknobs and things like that, sometimes you have to modify the hole a little bit and that fits perfectly in there and that hole to get in there and cut things loose and push things out. Um, so that's just a little chisel for plastic wood, things soft like that. Do not use that on metal. Um, I actually had a piece of wood sitting here that I used on that. I don't know what I've done with it, but this little thing, I sharpened it 
and it's extremely sharp. Um, this next one here is another small precision flathead. Um, it's not as precise as the other ones, but uh, if you guys ever run into one of them things where you got to kind of push something down into it and, and pry it open, that works very good for that. Um, that's just another little precision instrument, um, like a number one Phillips head. Um, this little hook here, um, I have looked all over the place. I really do not know its intended purpose, um, other than maybe like pulling, pulling the string and stuff through holes. Um, I did see a guy, uh, carrying bales of hay with this at, at one point in time, how it's got the, the straw, um, you just get it and hook it in there and, and hold it like this and, and carry it. Um, that's pretty cool. But I have looked all over the place, even on Victorinox website, and I could not find anything of that, what they actually specify the purpose for. Okay, let's see here. This is a awl, A-W-L, um, and kind of like a sewing punch. Um, if you guys have a leather belt and you need to make a hole for it, or even on a saddle or anything like that, um, that's what this is actually for. Um, and you have the hole there in the middle. So like if you push through the material, you can put string, twine, thread, little leather strips, whatever you have to through there and pull a good amount through the other side and pull it through. And then you do the same thing and just stitch with it. And then of course you've got your little lanyard ring or your uh, key fob, I guess. I don't know why somebody would want to put that on their keys, but I call it a lanyard ring. Let's just stick with that. Um, of course, you've got your tweezers. Every Swiss Army knife has tweezers. Those come in handy many, many times. When you get a little sliver in here or a splinter or a piece of metal, those are awesome. Or my wife, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think she actually used that to fix her eyebrows at one point in time. <laughs> that everybody knows what the tan toothpick looks like. That's to pick the food out your teeth. Good dental hygiene. And then this is another feature that people really love um, is this little pen. This is an actual writing pen. Um, and it, it does write. Sometimes you gotta scribble a little bit with it first, but pretty neat. I have used that on several occasions. Everybody needs a pen. Okay. Then you have your small drop point blade, um, which is very precision. Um, and this is Sandvik steel, by the way. Um, it, uh, it takes a very, very nice edge, very easy to maintain, very easy to sharpen. And you know, it, it holds an edge pretty good. Um, this is your standard large blade drop point also, obviously. Um, and these are full flat ground. And like I said, this Sandvik takes a wickedly sharp edge and uh, they, uh, they, they cut very nicely for what they are. Okay, then we have a file. Um, a little fingernail file here. You could use this um, for some light woodwork or light metal work. Um, and well, like aluminum, like real small stock aluminum. Uh, I have used it for that. It didn't really do any damage to it. Um, I wouldn't use it for steel or anything. It, it'll eat the, eat the file right off of it. And then this right here is a real fine, um, hacksaw, if you will. Um, you can use it for finer cuts on wood if you want to, and this works really good for plastic. Um, and I have used this for small aluminum pieces or even like brass, works very well. And then the end of this here, if you can see this, 
is tapered off quite a bit. Um, and what that's for is to get up underneath your fingernails or another picker for whatever else, but clean the dirt from underneath your fingernails. Okay. Then, and you can tell I have used this. <laughs> There's fat wood in there. Um, fat wood or cedar, one of the two. Uh, this is just your standard wood saw. These things are very sharp and uh, they do cut very well. Um, that's the only purpose for this, uh, this tool. Okay. There's a lot of people that do not know what this is. Um, you've got a small ruler on here, of course. You have two, two and a half inches, really usable there. There's a little bit more there, but you can see um, really two and a half usable. But uh, I've never really used that measurement or this tool for measuring, I don't believe. Um, and this right here where these teeth, this is not sharp at all. This is a fish scaler. If you've ever, ever went fish and caught fish, a lot of people like to scale their fish. You, uh, you say this is a bluegill or a crappie or small pan fish. You get this and you scrub it back and forth and it, all those little scales start flying everywhere. It's, it's a mess. Um, so again, that's a fish scaler. This right here, the little fork looking thing, it's not sharp at all either, as you can see. This is a fish hook remover. Um, if you've got, if you've got a, a fish hook, you know, up in a fish's mouth, say this is the belly, say the bottom of my finger right here would be the belly of the uh, hook. You get this part right here, put it in the hook and kind of push it out. I have used that a lot. Um, and that, that comes in real handy for like bluegill and things like that. You know, you wouldn't want to use it on a, like a large mouth bass or anything, but things that have real small mouths, you can, you know, kind of get in there and poke the hook out. Uh, and without harm to the animal, of course. Also, there is uh, another measurement on the other side of this. Okay. Got your scissors, of course. Um, I believe the intended purpose of these is to keep your fingernails trimmed. Um, you can use them for other things, of course, which I have. Um, everybody uses them for different things, but you know, I uh, I used to use regular fingernail clippers, and I don't anymore. I use these. <laughs> they they actually work quite well, and you will get into the meat un up underneath your fingernails if you're not careful. Um, those little scissors are very sharp. They're non serrated. Um, this being a Victorian ox, um, I don't believe I've ever seen any of the Victorian ox um, serrated. That's only a winger. Um, and guys, just to show you how precision that Victorian ox is, I flip this over. There is a small indent right there. It's like a little ditch. Um, this spring or this piece of metal right here enables this to flex back and that little piece of metal is rounded and it rides on the inside of that little ditch or ramp so it doesn't go to one side or the other or i know every one of you guys that's owned one of these things has probably done it at one time or another but when you go to shut this thing if you don't kind of hold it down like this and you leave it up sometimes that little spring will cock sideways and it'll catch and mess it all up through here which you can replace those you can See right there, you just push it out like a little push pin and then replace it. Okay. These are the handiest things on this, uh, this knife other than the blade, I believe. Uh, these little pliers, they're, they're not the best, but they are pretty darn precision. Um, it's better than having nothing. And of course you got your, your little jaws right here for larger things. And then these are, they're actually matched up fairly well at the top. They could use a little bit of work, but pretty darn good for a small pair of pliers like that. And in the middle, if you can see right here, it's a small wire cutter. I have used that a time or two. And they're, they're actually pretty darn sharp. 
Okay. Everybody that I've ever showed this knife to, they want to get something and be like, hey, you know, yeah, I can see this. And I mean, I guess you could use it for magnification purposes. I have a time or two. But the actual intended purpose of this is when it is not overcast and you have sun and you can start a fire. I have started a fire with this before. Um, it does work very well, especially this little lens being so small. Um, it, it produces a very fine point and it sm starts smoking almost immediately. You can create a good amber with this and uh, get you a fire going fairly quick. Then you have your standard number two Phillips. I can't tell you how many batteries I've changed in toys with this thing. It's a very, very good screwdriver. Um, it, it's kind of fat there at the end. It's not one of those flat screwdrivers like Gerber or Leatherman has. Well, I think I said that wrong. Gerber's got the flat ones. Leatherman's got some flat ones too. I don't think they're all like that. But anyway, um, this is a very good screwdriver. It's not... I've tried to take like number two or number one Phillips out with it and you can, but you got to press really hard, but that, that is a perfect number two Phillips head. Okay. Then you have your can opener. Um, this is old school way open cans guys, uh, rather than the pop top lids or your electric can opener sitting on uh, your kitchen counter. I hate them things, by the way. I like the old, old manual stuff, but power goes out and you got one of these or, you know, you just got to open a can, uh, canned food out camping or whatever. You've always got one of them with you. And a lot of people don't know this either. Um, never really pay attention to it. There's another flathead right here on the end of this. Right there. And it, it does work very well. I've used that on multiple occasions also. All right, this is three, four tools in one here. Of course, you've got your standard flathead screwdriver, got your bottle opener for your Pepsi, beer, whatever you drink, Coca-Cola, I like Coca-Cola. And then you have this little notch here. Um, this can substitute of one of two things. You can use it as a wire stripper. Um, if you've already rounded the insulation, lay, I don't have any wire here, but lay your wire out there and just pull it out and it strips it off. Or this is to pop barbed wire or uh, not necessarily barbed wire, pop wire. Um, you can lay this, say here's a barbed wire fence or a piece of wire that's, you know, under tension, of course, you can lay that on there and twist it and it will pop that, uh, pop that wire loose or you can lay it in there and bend it back and forth back and forth back and forth and it eventually busts but guys this is the victoria knox champ um if if you if you are into knives whatsoever uh if you tinker with anything if you fix stuff uh, this is a must have not necessarily this one i just like the champ because i feel like it's it's more versatile it's just got a little bit of everything on it. it's not giant and it's not really small um it's i have carried it over extended periods of time uh, but a lot of you guys if, you, if you're worried about weight and bulkiness um this thing isn't huge um let's see here what's a Okay. Everybody knows what a, how big a Bic lighter is. It's not huge, but it does have a considerable amount of weight to it. But for all the tools that you have, it's just, it's a given. If you guys don't own a Victorinox, pick one up and try it out. Sandvik Steel, they're fairly cheap. I think this thing runs about 75, 80 bucks-ish, somewhere around there. Mine's new old stock. I've still got the box and everything for it. Um, but uh, my friend Tommy that uh, works up at Knifeworks, Smoky Mountain Knifeworks, he, uh, 
he wanted me to do this video. <laughs> and uh, what, what's funny about that is he's a big, huge carbon steel buff. Uh, loves his carbon steel, which is fine. There's nothing at all wrong with carbon steel. Sandvik is not a carbon steel. And uh, I told him, we was talking about Vertorinox knives one day, and he said, I don't know. He said, I'm a carbon steel guy. And I said, I don't know, but I said, you ought to get you one of them sometime and just try it out. Well, he went and got the champ, I think in blue. He ended up taking it back because he didn't use it much. Then he got to missing it, and then he went and got another one. Now he's got a whole slew of them, and now he's telling me stuff about these things I don't even know. So <laughs> I thought that uh, that was pretty cool. Um, got somebody turned on to something new. He's a he's a, ba a big Great Eastern collector, um, very knowledgeable on old cases and uh, things of that nature. Good guy. But uh, Tommy, there's your video on uh, the Victoria Knox Champ. Um, hope you like it. You guys have any questions or comments down below or any uses I might have missed for this, please leave them. Subscribe if you like. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. There's more content coming. I appreciate you guys watching. Y'all have a good evening. Take her easy.